All right. Um, I think we'll get started in two minutes so that we could let everybody um, who wants to join join. And yeah, we'll get started in yeah a little bit. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if anybody comes in late, that's fine. Okay, so welcome to the second week of the Python programming class. All right, so our agenda for today, we're gonna review what we did last week and we're gonna um, do a little bit more on print statements. And then we're gonna do um, range function, for loops, if loops, while loops, and um, defining your own functions. And we'll give you guys some examples and some practice problems. And then we'll also give you guys homework for today. And the Zoom etiquette is the same as last time. If you have a question, use the chat or raise your hand. Um, keep yourself muted unless you want to ask a question or answer a question. And if you could turn your cameras on, please do, but it's not required. All right, so this is basically a review from last week. We did um, print statements and we also did inputs. And so print statements, they display the value of the string to the console and do that by doing um, print and then in parentheses, the string. And then input, same thing, it's just input. And then if you want to um, display a string to the console, you would put a string inside the um, parentheses and you'd have to um, define that to a variable, which, go, which is the next, um, Bullet point variables are objects that are assigned a value and the names are case sensitive. Um, data types is the next thing. We did, had strings, integers, floating points, which are decimals, floats, and Boolean values, which are true and false. And then we also did basic arithmetic and that's um, addition, subtraction, multiplication. And we had floating point division, which always returns a decimal. And we had quotient, which is always a whole number or integer division and um, exponents and remainders or modulus. And lastly, we did um, comparisons where the expression would evaluate to a Boolean value, true or false. And here are just some examples of comparisons. Okay, so last time we introduced you guys to print statements and input statements. So now we're gonna um, kind of make it a little easier on you guys when you're trying to print um, a string and you want um, different variables inside the string to print out as well. So there's um, a function called the format function that you can use for a print statement. And um, on the slide, basically what you do is you have print and then you have your string. And instead of dividing the string into different strings and then adding the variables in between. What you can do is in the places where you want the variables, you put curly brackets. 
and then um, you finish the string and then at the end you do dot format and in the parentheses you would add what variables you want in those um, curly brackets um, respective of the order. Um, so yeah, you have to make sure you define the variables before you do the print statement and it's easier ha than having to add each variable again and making sure the data type is a string when you're printing it out. The next statement is a return statement. And remember, this is not a print statement. So this basically sends the function's result back to the caller. And it's usually unseen by the user only until it's printed to the console, which you can do if you want. And um, these, uh, the statements after the return are um, not executed. Okay, so next we'll be going over the range function. Um, essentially, you can use the range function to simplify writing um, a for loop, which like we'll go over in the next slide. And um, it's essentially use it in a for loop to create a list of integers for iteration, which means like you go through that list multiple times. And then, um, so the syntax of a range function can be like um, start, end, step. This, it does, the range function doesn't have to include all of these start, um, the start number, end number, and the, like by how much it goes by. You can uh, have one number, you can have two numbers, and you can have three numbers, which all um, like mean create different range functions in a sense. Um, so start is like the starting number, but um, in a range function, the starting number is, it doesn't include, or not the starting number, sorry, the end number. In a range function, the end number is not included in the, is not iterated. So the end number is not included. So you have to consider like for example, if you have like starting number zero to um, end number 10, it, the, the range function will only run 10 times instead of 11 times since it started at zero because that number 10 is not included. So like I said, end, sequen end is a sequence that ends before this number and step is like how much you can go through it by like Say you want to go every other number, you would do like two or something. Um, and then some shortcuts, like I said, um, range 10, which is the same as range 0, 10, 1. Like these are different ways to have either one number, two numbers, or three numbers. Like you don't necessarily always need three numbers because it's just, I guess, a little kind of annoying. So, um, and then this will give you, like it'll iterate through the list from zero to nine and then range five to 10 will um, iterate through the list um, four times, I mean, five times, um, which gives you five, six, seven, eight, and nine, not including 10. Okay, so next we have um, four loops and you use for loops when you want to loop code. And that's basically instead of hard coding multiple statements that have like the same sort of meaning and um, like maybe like one or two variables change in those statements. Instead, you can use a for loop, which allows that repetition of code, but that's through a loop. And so for loops iterate through lists, arrays, string, and the range function, which, which we just went over. And um, We'll introduce you guys to lists and array later. Um, lists are basically sequences of objects with any data type. Um, yeah, and so this is the syntax for for loops. So basically you start off with four and then you have the variable and it would basically um, say that for the variable in the iterable, which again is either a list, array, a string or a range, um, do these statements and then keep going until the for statement is false. If that makes sense. So um, the variable is taking items from the iterable one by one, and the iterable is that collection of items. Yeah. 
And so this is like an example of um, a for loop, which is pretty simple. So um, the variable right here is x, and then it's saying in fruits. So x will assume um, the one of the strings in in the um, list of fruits. And um, while doing that, it'll print the, that um, value. So if x is first apple, it will print apple, and then it'll go to banana, and then it'll print banana, and then it'll go to cherry, and it'll print cherry. OK, so next is if loops. <clears throat> If loop is essentially like it uses is an it is an expression um, that uses a boolean value true or false, um, and it goes through the loop underneath if the loop like the boolean value equi um, evaluates to true, and if it doesn't evaluate to true, then it will follow the expression the um, statements after the if loop. Um, that's an if loop and if else loop would, um, it's essentially like an if loop, but instead of um, for the, when the expression evaluates to false, then um, it will go to the next um, part of the loop, which is the else expression. Um, and it'll do the statements in the else loop. And if elif and else loop, um, it combines the if else, but it includes an elif, which essentially means like else if. So um, if the expression, if the if expression is true, then it'll do the expression, it'll do the statements inside the if loop. If it's false, then it'll go to the elif statement. And if the elif statement evaluates to true, then it'll um, do the statements under that loop. However, if it evaluates to false, then it'll go to the else um, else expression, and then it will do the statements under the else part. All right, so next we have um, while loops, and these are used to, um, when you want to repeat a sequence of statements an unknown number of times. So um, if you remember previously for for loops, we knew how many times we wanted to repeat that statement. But while loops, um, you'd usually use them if you didn't know how many times you wanted to repeat that. So um, this type of loop basically runs when you're given a condition that is true, and it stops when that condition becomes false. And so when we write a while loop, we don't explicitly define um, how many iterations we want to be completed. You only write the condition that has to be true to continue um, the process. And whenever it becomes false again, it'll stop. So um, while loops can actually replace any for loop using the range, range function. Um, but you need to make sure that if um, you're doing a while loop that you it's not an infinite loop. So that basically means that um, a while loop can be an inf infinite loop if the condition is always true and it never becomes false. So if that happens, then you'll have to use um, like external control to um, stop the while loop. Yeah. So here's just like a little like diagram of how like a while loop works. So now we'll go over defining functions. So we um, introduced a function earlier, which was a range function, but there are also other functions that we've used before, like the print function and the input function. So these are built in functions. And there's also user defined functions. So it's essentially when you create a function that has reusable co code to do an action. Like, for example, you have um, the function and then you have these um, sort of like parameters. And um, there's a certain code in it. And after that code, you have the function and you call, instead of you would call the function after defining it, and then you would state what the parameters were, but instead of as them as variables, they would be like, for example, numbers or strings or something of that sort. And this call would um, 
go back up and you would basically plug in these numbers, strings or whatever into the um, parameters of the function and it would run that code. And it would, um, if you have an, a return statement, it would return a value. Or if you don't have a return statement, it would essentially return nothing, but your function could have print statements, which would print out values. Okay, so we're gonna show you guys a couple of examples. Um, I'll stop sharing and then Alicia will share her screen. Yeah. Also, again, if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand or um, we have the chat feature enabled today so you guys can ask questions in the chat too. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, I guess, um, one sec. Okay, so um, let's start off with, um, uh, like the print format that we went over first. Okay, so um, let's say we have variable item, which is equal to string apples. And then we have um, amount, which is equal to five. And then say I want to write like, um, I'll put it in a comment. Say I want to write, I have some apples like the um, variable item say i have some item and then um i have the amount of the item so essentially i want to say that um i have some apples, I have five apples is essentially what I want to say in this statement. Um, recalling the formatting that the print format statement that we learned, could anyone um, give me an idea of how I would write this in terms of the print formatting statements? Um, okay, well, I'll give you a hint. Um, so I'll write the part in the quotations. So I have some parentheses and then I have parentheses, or sorry, curly brackets, curly brackets. Um, and then after this, there's a statement that plugs in item and amount into this um, print statement where the curly brackets are. Does anybody know how I would write that? Anyone? It's dot something. Um, okay, I'll repeat the question. Um, does anyone know how I would, um, basically, there's a part that goes after this, what I just wrote, that would essentially plug in 
item and amount into the curly brackets in order to complete the print format statement. Does anybody know how I would write that? Wait, do you need us to put something inside the brackets? Um, not necessarily inside the brackets, but this the part after this the quotations, it will um, take those variables and um, put it in the curly brackets for you, if that makes sense. Okay, I'll just, I guess, do it myself then. <laughs> Um, so it will be dot format parentheses item comma amount comma item. So you will need to, so each curly bracket would is equivalent to a variable essentially in this. So item would be plug into this first curly bracket and then amount to the second one and then item again into the third one. You have to put item twice because you need to specify which curly brackets is equivalent to what item or what variable. And then you would get, I have some apples. Let me increase the screen. I have five apples. Okay. Um. So next we'll do another print format statement. Um, okay, let's say print. I want to say that, um, actually no, um, not gonna do another print format statement. So this is essentially equivalent to um, I have some item plus item plus um, quotation. I have plus string. Remember, we can't add numbers and you can't concatenate numbers and strings in a print statement in Python. So I have plus string amount plus item again. So this above statement, this formatting statement is essentially equal, equivalent to this statement. It's just the formatting statement is, I guess, cleaner in a, in a way and it's much easier to read than um, this bottom one. And it doesn't like the continuous plus 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 is a little um, annoying to type out. And then you could also do like, this might be a little bit advanced, but you could also say like items comma amount. And then like, nah, it's okay. I don't think, actually, never mind. Forget that. Um, well, I was just going to go on to for loops then. Um, Okay, so say I want to print out string hello um, 10 times. Does anybody know like what the for, for loop would like, would look like in that sense? Does anyone know? Oh, I have an idea. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it would say for counter in range, and then if you want to do ten times, you would put in brackets uh, zero comma ten, and then you would press enter on a new line, you would say print parentheses, quotation marks, or uh, hello. Yeah, that is um, correct. So it will print hello 10 times, 
But like we said, you don't necessarily need the first zero because um, if you just take out that first number or when, and because it's zero, the loop would automatically assume that your first number is zero. So you don't necessarily need that zero, but yeah, that's correct. So you could just do like for counter in range 10 and it would be the same as um, zero comma 10. Okay, let's do another one. Say um, I have variable x and it's equal to zero. Um, and then I want to print x five times, but each time I print x, it should increase by one. Does anybody know how I would do that using a for loop? Um, you would do for counter in range, uh, and then in brackets or uh, parentheses, you would do uh, zero, and you would press uh, go to the next line and say print in parentheses and quotations um, zero, and then. You would basically do the same thing uh, over and over again, except each time uh, you would say add a uh, one to zero. Um, I like your idea, but um, there are a few problems in this. Um, first of all, when you say for counter in range zero, so this loop won't run because um, it, is, it can't iterate zero times. It has to have like a number per se. And then when you say print zero, it's if you had like, if range, if it was range, for example, three, and you say print zero, um, there, you need to have a way to add to that. And like I said, we need to increase X, the variable X that I included up here by one each time. So if you say print string zero, it'll print string zero three times um, if you had range three, but it wouldn't increase by one because you haven't indicated any um, addition statement. And um, also zero here is a string. So it was the right idea, um, but you would have to do, um, for counter in range five, because I said um, print x five times, but every time the loop iterates, x increases by one. So you want to say in range five, and then you want to say print x instead of saying like print zero, print one, print two, print three. This is like um, a shorter way to do that. And then you say x plus equals one. So this is essentially like a x plus equals one is like a shortcut in Python. Instead of saying x is equal to x plus one, you would say x plus equals one, which is essentially the same thing. And using this, x would increase itself one every time it iterates through the loop. So first you would, it would start at zero, right? And then it'd say print x and then x would be printed as zero. And then it would increase by one. So now, x is equal to one, and then it would print x again. So it would print one and then so on and so forth. And it would go till four. But again, remember it did print five times because it started from zero. Okay. Um, well, we can, I think 
So shall we do another one? Um, I'll just move on to if if loops. So say we have x is equal to, we want to say like, we want to have a loop where um, you have number x and this is input it from the user. And um, using your loop, you want to see if the input a number from the user is greater than zero. So like um, a positive number or less than zero, which is a negative number or equal to zero. So does anybody know how I would um, essentially do this problem? So I'll give you the first state, first um, input function statement. So you'd say x int because remember inputs always give strings and we can't, um, in terms of Boolean like expressions, you can't compare a string to a numerical value. So it'll give you an error. So you gotta convert that string into an integer. And that would be by using int and then in parentheses. So it's a, um, input a whole number. I could just say a number. And then what would my first if statement be? Would anybody know? To say that, um, to check if my number is less than zero, equal to zero, or greater than zero. Does anybody have an idea? You can just, I guess, unmute and say it if you have an idea. Okay, I'll just give you the first statement then. So if a we want to do um, check if x is a negative number, so you would say x is less than zero. And essentially, you are checking. So if this statement is true, you would print um, your number is less than Okay. Um, does anybody know how we how I would check if it's equal to zero? Yes. Um, you would do um Alice x equal to zero uh colon and then you would print uh, your number is equal to zero. Yeah, that is correct. Um, would you like to do the next statement? Sure. Um, then you would do else, um, you, and then you would print your number is uh, greater than zero. Yeah. So you don't need to add a condition after else because um, you've already checked that if it's less than zero, if it's equal to zero. So the only other option left is to check if it's greater than zero. So any other option besides less than zero or equal to zero, you already assume that it's greater than zero. So you don't need a condition after else. You almost never add a condition after else, I believe, in Python. Um, and then we can run this code and put a number, let's just say 984, your number is greater than zero. And let's just um, check zero. 
the number is equal to zero. And let's say negative 293. Oops. Your number is less than zero. So remember, um, always check every single, I guess, like part of your code. Never want to check just one value to make sure your code is running because there could be a bug in the other parts of your code. So make sure to always check every single part to see if it works. Okay, so now we'll go on to while loops. So you can essentially, while loops and for loops are somewhat interchangeable. Like you can take a for loop and change it into a while loop. Um, personally, I think for loops are easier than while loops. I don't know, but you can um, use both and they're interchangeable. So let's say I want to, um, let's say I have variable i and it's equal to one and I want to go through the loop um, less than six times. And I want every time it prints variable i, but at the same time, it also needs to increment i by one. So does anybody know how I would write the first um, line of the while loop. You can just unmute if you have any ideas. Uh, my audio cut out, what are we trying to do again? Oh, um, yeah, so you want to have uh, so we have a while loop and say we have variable i is equal to 1 and we want to go through this loop um, we want to iterate through this loop less than six times so five times we want to iterate it through five times and every time we iterate through it it would have to print one and it would increment it would or uh, increment i by one so okay. do you guys have any idea? I have an idea. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you would do while i is less than six, colon, um, print in parenthesis i, and then you would do if, uh, sorry, then you would do uh, i, uh, plus equals to one and then you would run your state uh, run your code yeah that's completely correct um, okay so um it would print out one two three four five because um i started at one but um i guess if you started at zero then it would go from zero to four but either way it prints out five times and it rates i it increments i by one each time Okay, let's do another while loop. So let's say I have variable counter equals zero. And um, I want to check if um, counter is inside the loop or um, inside else. So um, essentially iterating through um, you want to iterate through the while loop two times and um, each time it iterates through the while part it would print out it is inside the loop and then whoops and then um, counter would increase by one but when um, counter has finished iterating two times then you would have an else part that would print inside else. Does anybody know how I would do that? Well, let's first do the um, while part where you iterate it twice and increment counter by one and you would print inside the loop. You can just unmute and say. Um, what number are we increasing the uh, counter by? Um, by one. Okay. And how many times? Um, you want to iterate through the while loop two times. 
or technically three times because it starts at zero. Okay, then um, it it would do um while counter uh is less than uh four because you want to do it three times. Um. Well, um, sorry to interrupt, but um, zero. So you have to. Um, didn't get oh my God. Sorry about that. Um, oh, you're starting at zero, so it would go zero, one, two, not zero, one, two, three. So we only want to iterate three times, but since it's starting at zero, you have to consider zero the value. Uh -huh. So it will be three, but um, yeah, keep going. And then uh, you would do print counter, and then um, you would do counter plus equals to one. Okay, so that's correct. Most of it's correct, but like, um, I don't know if you catch this or not, but it's okay. But um, we want to check if essentially, well, not check, but we want to say um, when it is iterating through the while loop, we want to print out inside loop. So you could print out counter, but like, oops, I'll just give you numbers. But so we would print out inside loop to check if, well, not check to see if uh, you are iterating through the while loop and then you would say, else and then you would say print inside else so essentially how this works is while it's iterating through the while loop it would print inside loop and then counter would increase by one every time and then after the after counter has increased um or is greater than three then it would go to this else statement and it would print inside else So as you can see, inside loop is printed three times and then inside else is printed once. Like I said, um, it's three times because you started with the number zero, not number one. So it goes zero, one, two. And then after, since counter is increased by one each time. So essentially first is zero, counter is zero up here and then it increases by one. So counter is one here and then two and then it is equal to three. But since counter is only checking if it is less than three, then it will go to the else statement and it would print inside else. Okay, so now um, we'll go over functions. Do we have enough time for that? One second. Um, Okay, so I'll just quickly go over um, a function. So let's say we have function um, candy store, and then we have number, the parameters number and cost, and we have the total cost, which is equal to the cost of each candy times the number of candies you have. And then you want to see how much total you have um, after buying a certain number of candies. So you just say return total, and then you would say um, print your total is. And then you would call the function candy store. And then you would input um, two values, let's say, for example, um, seven and 0 
And then this would essentially, um, you have to write the print statement after um, if you want to see your value, the return value of total. Otherwise, um, it'll just return total, but it won't actually show anything to the console. So you, if you want to see something, um, you'd have to print something out. You don't necessarily need this like, um, what do you call it? This like um, line before, but you would need to say um, print and then um, the called function in order to see what return total is. So we will, oh that's a spelling error. Okay, ignore that spelling error, but um, it would print your total cost is 3.5 because we bought seven candies that were zero or 50 cents each. Okay, so um, let's do, do we have time for another one? Um, I think we can just go to the practice problems now. Okay, cool. Um, so I will screen share. Okay, so I think you guys need probably like, let's say, we'll give you guys eight minutes to do this. So do it on your own. And then um, we'll come back and we'll go over the problems. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions, you can just ask in the chat or you can unmute whatever works for you guys. So eight minutes.
Okay, so I, I think you guys still have two minutes left, but um, just so that we have enough time to like finish everything off, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys um, how to do the practice problems. So let's see, okay. So the first one was asking um, to translate the following for loop to while loops that the program does exactly the same thing. And um, just a reminder, um, this is how you do um, multiple line comments and one line comments, just, yeah. Okay, so um, we're given the for loop um, for num in range, two, that's the starting point, 20, the end point, and three, the step. And then if the num, is, the remainder when divided by two is equal to zero, print the num. So all we have to do, it's pretty simple actually, um, how to change this into a while loop. So First off, we have to define num as two. And then what we would do is we would um, write the while loop and that would be while num is less than 20. So remember, um, it's not less than or equal to because the um, end value is always, um, you never include that. So it's always gonna be less than. And then you would do if num the remainder when divided by two is equal to zero. And remember double equal signs when you want um, a Boolean, like when you want a Boolean um, answer. So if um, the remainder is equal to zero, then print the num. And um, so there's actually one more thing that we have to add and does anybody know um, what we have to add to make this um, equivalent to the for loop? I can give you guys a hint. It has to do with, um, we have to make sure that it's not an infinite while loop. So how would we do that? We'd put like a break statement. Well, um, not really. Um, I see where you're going, but right now, um, what's happening is we have num as two, right? And we're not changing that value. So it's gonna continuously be two as it goes through the loop. So that's why it's infinite. So what can we do so that it's not infinite? Oh, we could do num plus equals one. Yeah, so um, that's right, but the for loop is a step three. So we would just do num plus equals three, but that's right, yeah. So if we run this to give us two, eight, 14, I think, yeah. Okay, so number two, write the function is odd of n that returns true when n is odd and false otherwise. So we have to define a function is odd and the parameters are n. So write a function that returns true when n is odd. So to check if n is odd, we would have to figure out what the remainder is. And if it's odd, then the remainder is one. So we would do, if it's, oh, sorry. If it's divisible by, when you divide by two, if that remainder is one, then return true. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then else um, return false. So you could do um another l if statement um if l if n the remainder when divisible by two is zero return false, but then you would have to have another else statement. So yeah, you could just keep it as an else statement and not worry about the condition. Okay, so if we run this, it should work. Yeah. So two is not odd, three is odd, 2,984 is even, so not odd, and then yeah. Okay, so last one, um, write a function print winner um, with a parameter winner that takes the integer of winner and prints out a message according to who won. So we have to define a function again. So we define print winner and the parameter is winner. So if the winner 
is equal to one, then we would print I one. And then L if, because remember we want another if um, condition. If L if the winner is equal to zero, then print tie. And then L if again, winner is equal to negative one, print U one. And then else print, we'll just say unknown for now. Okay, so basically um, this is like a function that you can use if maybe you're writing a program like that's like rock, paper, scissors. And like as rock, paper, scissors, you have like the values as one, zero, negative one. So you could do it like that. Um, yeah, so we could test this out. We could say print winner is, oh, sorry. It, the parameter is one and that should print out I won. Yeah. Okay. So that was the last practice problem. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Um, there is homework and this is the link for the homework and it's optional. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Um, but we will be going over the answers um, for the homework next class. Um, also, side note, in the homework, there is a REPL, there's like a REPL link, and you have to copy the code in that REPL and make your own REPL so that you could do the problems. Okay, yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. And there's no meeting next week. So, um, yeah, no meeting July 4th. So don't join the Zoom call. <laughs> have a great week, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Um, Sahiti, I can just um, give you the link right now. I'll stop sharing. I'll probably upload all the slides to the document so that you guys have access to it. Okay.
Okay. Um, if you guys are here for the machine learning class, um, I think the instructors aren't home right now. And um, uh, there was supposed to be an email that was um, supposed to be sent out earlier, but that didn't happen. So um, yeah, the class is canceled for today. Um, the second class will be next week um, on July 4th. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Okay.